I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. Apollo 11 The American spacecraft Apollo 11, July 16 to 24, 1969, made the first successful landing of humans on the moon. On July 20, 1969, at 2017 Universal Time Coordinated, Commander Neil Armstrong and Lunar Module Eagle pilot Buzz Aldrin touched down. Six hours and 39 minutes later, at 2.56 Universal Time Coordinated, Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. They spent nearly two and a half hours together investigating the location they had called Tranquility Base upon landing. Aldrin joined him 19 minutes later, Armstrong and Aldrin spent 21 hours, 36 minutes on the moon's surface before launching to rejoin Columbia. Armstrong and Aldrin collected, 21.5 kilograms, of lunar material to send back to Earth while Command Module Columbia's pilot Michael Collins was in lunar orbit. The fifth crewed mission of NASA's Apollo program, Apollo 11 was launched by a Saturn V rocket from Kennedy Space Center on Merritt Island, Florida, on July 16 at 1332 Universal Time Coordinated. The Apollo spacecraft was made up of three separate components, a command module with a cabin for the three astronauts, which was the only component that made it back to Earth, a service module, which provided propulsion, electricity, oxygen, and water for the command module, and a lunar module, which had two stages, a descent stage for a lunar landing and an ascent stage for returning the astronauts to lunar orbit. The third stage of the Saturn V launched the astronauts to the moon, and after separating the spacecraft from it, they flew for three days until they reached lunar orbit. On July 20, Armstrong and Aldrin landed in the Sea of Tranquility after boarding Eagle. Eagle's ascent stage was used by the astronauts to ascend from the moon's surface and rejoin Collins in the command module. Before they carried out the maneuvers that sent Columbia out of the final of its 30 lunar orbits and onto a route back to Earth, they jettisoned Eagle. On July 24, after spending more than eight days in space, they came back to Earth and landed in the Pacific Ocean. A global audience saw live TV coverage of Armstrong's first lunar landing step. One modest stride for man, one great leap for mankind, was how he put it. By achieving the national objective of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth before this decade is through, put forth by President John F. Kennedy in 1961, Apollo 11 effectively demonstrated U.S. dominance in the space race to show spaceflight superiority. Mission Launch and Flight to Lunar Orbit From the highways and beaches close to the launch site, an estimated million spectators watched the launch of Apollo 11. General William Westmoreland, the Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army, for cabinet officials, 19 state governors, 40 mayors, 60 ambassadors, and 200 congressmen were among the dignitaries present. Together with former President Lyndon B. Johnson and his wife Lady Bird Johnson, Vice President Spiro Agnew witnessed the launch. There were over 3,500 media representatives there. About two-thirds of them were Americans, and the remaining ones came from 55 other nations. There were an estimated 25 million spectators in the United States alone when the launch was broadcast live across 33 nations. Radio broadcasts were listened to by millions of people worldwide, from his office in the White House, President Richard Nixon and his NASA liaison officer, Apollo astronaut Frank Borman, watched the launch. Apollo 11 was launched by Saturn V AS-506 on July 16, 1969, at 1332 Universal Time Coordinated, 932 Eastern Daylight Time. The launch vehicle started to roll into its flying azimuth of 72.058 degrees about 13.2 seconds into the flight. About 2 minutes and 42 seconds into the mission, the first stage engines completely shut down. Then, the SIC was separated, and the S-2 engines were ignited. At around 9 minutes and 8 seconds, the second stage engines finally switched off and separated, allowing the SIVB engine to fire for the first time a few seconds later. 
Twelve minutes into its journey, Apollo 11 reached a height of 185.9 kilometers by 183.2 kilometers, entering a nearly circular Earth orbit. At 16:22 and 13 seconds Universal Time it's coordinated, a second firing of the SIVB engine propelled the spacecraft onto its trajectory toward the moon after one and a half orbits. Collins was in the left seat and in charge of the controls when the transposition, docking, and extraction was maneuver was carried out, which took place some 30 minutes later. The highlight for the to do this, Columbia had to be detachable from the used second. SIVB stage before wheeling around and docking with Eagle still fastened to the stage. When the LM was removed, the combined spacecraft began to travel toward the moon while the rocket stage continued to travel away from the moon. To prevent the third stage from clashing, this was done. Apollo 11 went behind the moon at 17.21 and 50 seconds universal time coordinated on July 19 and then started its service propulsion engine to enter lunar orbit. The crew caught brief glimpses of their landing site in the southern sea of Tranquility, 19 kilometers southwest of the crater Sabine D, throughout the 30 orbits that followed. The location was chosen in part because the automated Ranger 8 and Surveyor 5 landers, as well as the Lunar Orbiter mapping spacecraft, had described it as being reasonably level and smooth and because it was unlikely to pose significant landing or EVA issues. It was located 68 kilometers to the southwest of the crash site of Ranger 8 and 25 kilometers southeast of the Surveyor 5 landing site. Landing Armstrong once more glanced outside and took semi-automatic control after observing that the computer's landing destination was in a boulder-strewn terrain just to the north and east of a 91-meter crater, later identified as West Crater. Armstrong thought about landing away from the boulder field so they could gather geological samples from it, but they were unable to do to their excessively high horizontal velocity. Aldrin communicated navigational information to Armstrong, who was busy controlling Eagle, during the fall. Armstrong, who was currently 33M above the ground, was resolved to touch down at the earliest opportunity despite being aware that their propellant supply was running low. Armstrong located a spot of open land and directed the spaceship there. He found a crater in his new landing place as he approached it, now 76M above the ground. Once the hole was cleared, he came across another area of level land. With only 90 seconds of fuel left, they were now 30 meters over the ocean's surface. His ability to determine the spacecraft's velocity started to be hampered by the lunar dust that the LM's engine was kicking up. Armstrong concentrated on some sizable boulders that protruded from the dust cloud so he could gauge the speed of the spacecraft as he descended. Aldrin yelled, contact light, as soon as he saw that at least one of the 170 cm probes hanging from Eagle's footpads had made contact with the ground. Armstrong was intended to stop the engine right away since the engineers feared it may explode under the pressure of the engine's own exhaust reflecting off the lunar surface. However, he failed to do so. Eagle landed three seconds later, at which point Armstrong turned off the engine. Aldrin said right away, OK, shut off the engine. Out of detent is ACA. Armstrong admitted, without delay. Auto. Aldrin went on, auto for both modes of control. Disable the override for the descent engine. Off the engine arm. 413 is in. The Attitude Control Assembly, ACA, served as the LM steering wheel. To instruct the reaction control system jets to fire, output was sent to the LGC. The term, out of detent, indicated that the stick had shifted from its spring-centered position, much like the turn indication on an automobile. The variable indicating that the LM had landed was present at LGC address 413. On Sunday, July 20, Eagle landed with 98 kilograms of usable fuel still present at 2017 and 40 seconds universal time coordinated. The lunar module had enough fuel for another 25 seconds of powered flight before an abort without touchdown would have become unsafe, according to information available to the crew and mission controllers during the landing, but post-mission analysis revealed that the actual figure was likely closer to 50 seconds. The astronauts on Apollo 11 experienced an early low fuel warning because they had less fuel than most later flights when they touched down. 
Later, it was discovered that this was caused by the propellant sloshing more than anticipated, exposing a fuel sensor. In order to avoid this on following missions, more anti-slosh baffles were mounted to the tanks. Aldrin completed the post-landing checklist, and Armstrong recognized this with, engine arm is off, he said, before saying, Houston, tranquility base here, in response to Charles Duke, the Capcom. An eagle has touched down. Listeners were made aware of the completion and success of the landing by Armstrong's impromptu switch of the call sign from Eagle to Tranquility Base. Duke pronounced his response incorrectly as he described Mission Control's relief, Roger, Tuan, Tranquility, we imitate you down. A group of men are on the verge of going blue. We've resumed breathing. You're welcome. Before getting ready for the EVA two and a half hours after landing, Aldrin radioed to Earth. The pilot for LM is here. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite everyone listening, wherever they may be, to take a time to reflect on the last few hours events and to express gratitude in their own way. He then had a private communion. At the time, Madeleine Murray O'Hare, an atheist, had sued NASA, requesting that their astronauts stop from broadcasting religious activities while in space after she took issue with the Apollo 8 crew reading from the Book of Genesis. Aldrin decided not to discuss directly having communion on the moon because of this. Dean Woodruff, the church's pastor, provided Aldrin's communion kit. Aldrin was an elder at the Webster Presbyterian Church. The chalice used on the moon is kept at Webster Presbyterian, which holds an annual celebration on the Sunday closest to July 20. The astronauts were supposed to sleep for five hours after the landing, but they decided to start preparing for the EVA early since they thought they wouldn't be able to sleep, 